Okay, so for APRV, um, we don't see it a whole lot and it's kind of utilized somewhat incorrectly, usually too late. Um, but APRV is an open lung um, type of ventilation mode and it's for patients who have um, lungs that are recruitable so that you can actually recruit the alveoli to improve oxygenation. Um, uh, proning is what you want to do first, but if for whatever reason the patient cannot prone, they're too obese, or there's some contraindication, APRV is a good alternative. Um, the ARDS type patient is the one that we see the most, and then patients who have ARDS but are not responding to the lung protective strategy modes of ventilation. Um, so coming to the ventilator, one thing that I noticed with the new ventilators is that when you go to modes, we're used to seeing dual pap, dual pap plus, um, but now, and it's all licensing things, we want to choose APRV every time. If APRV is not available, you want to choose Duopap Plus because Duopap does not give all the correct settings that you want to dial in. So I'm going to hit um, APRV. And then just by listening, you can hear that it's an inverse ratio ventilation has a really long inspiratory phase at a high peep. That's gonna be your um, P high to help recruit that alveoli. Um, so there's gonna be four main settings. Well, actually more than that, I'm sorry. But you're gonna have your, your P high, which is essentially a peep high. And you're gonna get that by um, getting your plateau pressure. Usually about 20 to 30 is where you're gonna start Try not to go above 35 for your initial P high. I know that sometimes the plateau is higher than that, um, but 30 is about where you wanna be. Your P low is gonna be zero. Um, you never actually, the patient never actually reaches the threshold of zero P because there's just not enough time for that release. Um, and that's gonna be your, your P at the low, at the exhalation. Your T high is gonna be the time that you're gonna be at this high P. Um, start about four to seven seconds, and that's just to give a backup rate for the patient to um, at least get rid of some of their CO2. Your T low is going to be at the time at the, the low peep. Um, 0.2 to 0.8 is a good place to start. I have it at 0.5. So you can see what your backup rate is going to be here. This is a pressure mode, so you might have to play with the trigger, but usually a pressure trigger will work better for the patient. Your pressure support, you want to be at zero. The reason for that is because you don't want to add pressure support on top of this high peep, because if they have a lot of support to take a bigger breath, you don't want to cause barotrauma. Um, oxygen, start out at 100. And then another thing to start out is, um, you want your TRC, your tube compensation, to be set up, and you want it, I have an eight tube on there, you want it at 100% in order to support spontaneous breaths. Contrary to what a lot of people think, you do want your patient spontaneously breathing. Um, and that's because we will allow for permissive hypercapnia. However, we wanna one, allow the patient to take their own breaths to get rid of some of that CO2. Two, it'll decrease the intrathoracic pressure. Also, um, when it does come time to wean, there won't be as much muscle wasted when they're, if they're sedated the whole time on this ventilator mode. So you'll see here now this straight line, that means the patient is not taking any breaths. And then you'll see those little mountains, that's what you wanna see. And even a 100 cc breath or less is fine. Sometimes your rate might go really high, that's okay too. It's kind of weird to get used to, but this is what you want. You want your patient sedated enough to be comfortable because it is an awkward mode but you do want them taking those little micro breaths. Um, if at any reason you switch over to this mode and your hemodynamics tank, your blood pressure goes down, your pips are way, way high, the best thing you can do is just release that pressure and then switch it back to whatever previous mode you were on and reconnect to the patient. The patient did not tolerate that change. Um, as far as weaning, you can wean from this this mode it's called a drop and stretch um, the idea behind it is that you're eventually going to have your p high lower for a longer amount of time and then you're eventually just going to be on a cpap trial and then you can obviously excavate from cpap 
when you're dropping your P high at that point is when you can start adding in the pressure support to mimic that SBT type breathing. Um, I have cards cut out. You can see Coletta or Molina. It'll give you a quick guide on if you are too hypercapnic, what changes you can do, or if you're still hypoxic, what changes you can do as far as adjustments. Um, one of the main contraindications for APRV essentially is just um, head trauma patients because we want their CO2 low um, and we don't want to create any high pressure um, within the brain more than we need to. Um, and probably don't want to put APRV on prone patients because most likely they're going to be paralyzed and it's harder to take a spontaneous breath when you're prone.